welcome to the Ohlone Show. I'm your host, Jamie Ohlone. In this episode, with me, with me not have guests, I, I mean regulars, sorry. But if they, do, if they don't come, that's fine, the show goes on. As for our guest, he's from Germany, but he's currently living between Brighton and London. He's also, he is an interim slash fractional CRO. Now that's a first, in my opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Volker Baluda. Th- th- thank you very much. What a what a nice intro. Yes, I, I am originally from Germany. Moved to the UK um, over 20 years ago now. 21 years to be precise. And yes, I work as an interim and fractional uh, chief revenue officer, head of sales, VP sales. You know, titles are less important when you work for yourself. It's about, you know, generating revenue and building sales structures and marketing structures and client success structures um, and go to market strategies for start and scale ups in the uh, tech and SaaS sector. Okay, very intriguing. And w- what do you like about being the CRO? Oh, um, if I say I, I started out in sales um, 15 odd years ago, um, kind of <laughs> fell into it like a lot of people, um, ended up if I say it was a telemarketing company and I remember my first day at sales. So I, I looked at the Excel sheet in front of me where I was supposed to um, supposed to dial a random number and call a random person I've never spoken to. And then I looked at the door and I looked at the Excel sheet and I looked at the door and I started dialing, dialing if I say, these people up and started selling. And if I say I never looked back, I absolutely loved it. So sales is about, you know, connecting with people, um, helping people, supporting people, uh, delivering useful solutions, I suppose. Okay, nice. And how is, li- how is life for you right now? How is life for me right now? Um, life is always changing. It's an interesting question. I don't know how to answer that. Um, life is constantly changing. So as a consultant, you, you always look for new work. Um, you always try to improve, you know, if I say the situation of the clients you have. So you're constantly selling yourself, um, but overall life is good. Um, you know, if I say on a, on a on a personal level, I'm you know happily married. I uh, I have two children. I have you might hear in the background. I have a puppy of seven months, um, and uh, you know I live as you said. You know between London and Brighton, so I'm, I'm closer to Brighton. Um, so in a lovely part of the UK. Incredible. And um, what 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 encouraged you to move from Germany to the UK? Oh, it was purely for um, studies. So I um, uh, was studying in Germany, and I didn't, if I say, I didn't like the systems. The t- system didn't like me. So my brother, who was doing his PhD in Edinburgh at the time, suggested I should have a look at um, at universities in the UK, and I ended up in uh, Aberdeen. Um, did my undergrad, did my postgrad. Um, found my my you know my wife or she found me depending how you look at it and uh, the rest is history so I I, I decided to stay and uh, yeah never never looked back I definitely like it yeah you made the right choice <laughs> and what what do you think is the difference between living in the UK and living in Germany oh it de- depends on depends on which area you look at right i mean germany is a very um oh, how do i best describe it um you know if I say the german culture can be quite black and white right very very right or wrong um oh yeah very rules driven and if i say the uk is less so it's less of a you know you, you still have rules but it's not if i say not as strict people are a little bit more relaxed Although on first sight, that might not appear, you know, you, you know, if, if, if you think of Britain generally, you, you think of people in, you know, black suits and a bowler hat, right? Um, but I, I think, yeah, generally speaking, I think that the Brits are much more relaxed than, than the Germans are. You know what? I absolutely agree with that. That's the kind of comparison I make between the UK and Brazil, because uh, I, am, I am Brazilian myself and my mom is okay. Brazilian, so... Yeah, that I, I, that's the kind of comparison I use myself. Someday I actually want to live in Brazil because it's so chill and the temperature's always warm year round. And yeah, the people, it's just kind of chill. Yeah. I mean, the, the weather is better. 
right? Yeah. If I say for most of the time, despite us obviously with global warming, I think things are changing. We, we're slowly getting white wine here, very, very good sparkling wine down here. And I guess in, in 10 years time, we're probably looking at really good red wine in this country as well, right? So, you know, things are always changing. Yeah, absolutely. And at least the weather in Germany isn't like in Manchester right now, because, uh, yeah, that's really pouring down right now. That's, Isn't yeah, it? depressing. <laughs> oh, yeah. But hey, we're used to it. It is what it yeah. is. Just deal with it. Exactly. It's, it's dry here at the moment, although, you know, I, I anticipate a downpour in the next two hours, I'd say. Oh, OK. Cool, cool. How did you spend your last birthday? My last Thursday, um, I was actually working out of a members club in London. Um, and obviously, as, as everyone else of the nation, you know, heard about the, the Queen falling ill or, see, you know, her, her her situation getting worse. And unfortunately, I think by the time I got home, unfortunately, she, she has passed passed on. Oh, your poor thing. Rest in peace. I send my deepest condolences. So what is your favorite season? My favorite season is actually autumn, I have to say. So I like I like the season we're in um, because I, I don't like... So, so if you're Brazilian, you're probably used to the hot weather we had in the UK. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan. So as soon as it gets above 25 degrees, it's, um, it's not that pleasant for me. So I like when it gets a bit colder. Um, you know, if I say I, I don't like the rain, I mean, who does like the rain? Um, but generally, if I say I'm, I'm happy between 15 and 20 degrees, a slight breeze. Um, so, yeah, then, of course, once the colors change, right, on the trees, the leaves, it's, it's just a beautiful time of the year. Yeah, absolutely. What is the best way to stay motivated? Oh, um, see, I, I also work a bit, if I say, as, as a coach and... Um, uh, you know, if I say mindfulness trainer and if I say general personal development, self-development trainer. So I look at these topics on a regular basis. I think most, I mean, you, you, you can look at motivation either intrinsic or extrinsic, right? So intrinsic, it comes from inside. So goals you, you set yourself. And extrinsic is, is goals someone else sets for you, which then are normally rewarded. So if I say on a basic level, Motivation is all about setting yourself the, the right goal, something you want to achieve. Or if it's external, um, getting rewarded for achieving a goal um, by, if I, if I say, by, by goals that have been set for yourself or maybe set, you know, alongside your, your manager or, you know, whoever you set goals with. You know, that could be your, your, your partner, it could be, you know, your children. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. So would you rather be really hot or really cold? Um, I suppose I kind of answered that question with saying, um, <laughs> with, with, with <laughs> saying which season I like. De definitely cold. I, I, I'm of that opinion. I can rather, I rather put layers on, but if it gets really hot, you, there's, there's only that many clothes you can take off. Right? So <laughs> it's, but once you're down to the bare skin, there's not much more you can do, right? Whilst if it gets colder, you can always put on, Another layer, and another layer. And another layer, and another exactly. layer, and exactly. so on and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> so cold, yeah. Yes. Have you ever met anyone famous? Oh, that's, that's, that's an interesting question. So I, I was discussing that with, with someone the other day, and um, I, if I say I've, I've met the Queen, I never talked to her, but I did meet her um, back at uni in Aberdeen. I, I don't know, I don't remember what she was doing. So I said, Queenie, hello, and she kind of ignored me, fair enough. Um, I'm not very good in celebrity spotting. Um, so I've never really, if I say, met anyone where I go like, oh yeah, I, I had a chat with whoever, but you know, I've, I've, I've spotted the odd celebrity in London, um, as you do, but but I famously say, and if I say not, not that Madonna would use a tube, but I, I used to say, you know, I could sit next to the tube uh, next next to the tube, yeah, next to Madonna on the tube, and I wouldn't have a clue who she is. So, yeah, so 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 probably I'm never going to meet anyone famous. It's all right, that happens. And besides, maybe someday the time will come again. Exactly, you never know. Yep. 
Time works in mysterious ways. Where do you see yourself 20 years from now? Oh, 20 years from now, um, I'm probably still going to be where I am now um, and probably still, in, still doing the similar things I'm doing now. I mean, I would be closer to retirement. Um, the, the kids would have left the house, I would have hoped. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm po probably a very similar situation. Maybe a little bit more, if I say security, you know, given I'm, I would be moving towards pensions uh, or pension and retirement. But uh, yeah, I can't see myself not working until I'm probably 70, 75. Um, I mean, you know, who, who knows what, what life has in stock for us, right? As you just said. And if you look at the um, current king, um, you know, he's, he's 73 and he just started a new job. So, you know, there's no reason we can't start a new job when we are 60 or 70 and, and do something different. Um, but I personally anticipate not too many changes um, in terms of what I'm doing and, and how I'm doing things over the next 20 years. But you, you never know. Yeah, you never know. If, if you could get an exotic pet, any, any animal at all, yeah. what kind of companion would you like? Oh, so as, as, as I said, um, we, we do have a seven months old um, puppy, uh, a miniature dachshund. It's, I don't know if it's probably not classified as an exotic pet. <laughs> um, so if I, if I could think of an exotic pet, I mean, we have cats. So, so having a tiger, I think, would be quite interesting, um, although a bit dangerous. So maybe not the best, um, best thing. Um, you know, maybe a goat or something. I wouldn't mind a goat. I think goats are quite friendly. Um, but yeah, I, I think I need a bigger garden for that. I, I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a tricky one, isn't it? If you, yeah. if, if, you, if you think about all these exotic animals that are out there, um, you know, I mean, look at elephants, right? I think an elephant is fantastic. Would I want to have an elephant as a pet? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What food have you never eaten, but you would really like to try it? Oh, um, pass. I think I tried most of the food I want or had a chance of trying. Um, I don't think there's any food on my bucket list where I say I really would like to try that. And not too much into you know, coming back to the animals, exotic food. So, you know, so I, I've, I've tried a snail in Paris once and it wasn't to my taste. I tried an oyster, wasn't to my taste either. Um, you know, there, there are restaurants in London that, that uh, you know, sell and, and cook, I suppose, um, insects and stuff. And I probably would try it, but I, I can't say I, I want to try it. <laughs> yeah. But I probably would. Of course. What place would you first travel to if you could teleport anywhere? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I think, I think um, the Himalayan, um, potentially Mount Everest, but you know, again, it, it's quite cold, and I would have to prepare for that properly. Um, but Malaya, no. I'm, I'm living after the Buddhist philosophy. It and uh, you know it's you know it, it could be quite nice to to explore Nepal yeah mm -hmm. yeah i absolutely agree with that have you ever had a paranormal experience no okay fair enough <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I see I, you know um i i watch these tv shows every now and then and my wife hates me for watching them and i don't know why i watch them you know, the ones where they allegedly can spot ghosts in old houses and stuff and where people died and communicate with the dead. And I am i don't really believe in it. I find it fascinating to watch because we all hope there's something there. Um, but no, I've never had any, any personal experience and I don't think I want to either. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> cool, cool. What would you change about your life if you could oh um oh that's a good that's 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 a that's a very interesting question um i think 
I think if I could, I'd love to give back more, e.g. What I mean by that, if, if I could work less days for money and more days for charity, I think that would be fantastic, right? So if you're, if you're able to make a positive difference in the world. And so, I mean, I, I, I don't know who's listening here, but, um, you know, if, if, if there was a job, that instead of just solely looking at revenue and, and 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 revenue gain, you know, you get paid for actually changing the world um, to be a better place, and you still get paid enough. Um, you know, I think that would be fantastic. But uh, you know, if you look at, if I say the the, the nurses out there, the, the firefighters, you know, for for the jobs they do, unfortunately, I think they they're all totally underpaid, um, which you know I I find. You know, I find depressing actually. Um, whilst if I say we, we in the commercial world um, get paid a good salary, um, but often don't change the world. So I think, I think balancing that a little bit more. So I'm, um, you know, if I say out of self promotion, I might as well mention it. I do launch a new podcast in a, a few weeks that, uh, time called Men Up, Men Down, and we're looking at uh, mental health in men, midlife crisis. And um, that's the topic. If I say where, if I say it, 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 it affects me because I'm midlife crisis. Um, luckily, it doesn't affect me because I, my mental health is is good. Um, however, my my co-host has mental health um, challenges, and it's something where we want to give back to to society and actually being able to um, to um, to help others with with the findings we have. And I think that's a that's the first step in in the right direction for me. Um, but yeah, if I could do more of that and have more time for that, that would be um, that would be nice. Yeah, you know what? That is a really great idea. A podcast about mental health, and especially being hosted by someone who has been through mental health issues themselves. That that's a really great way of using a platform in this medium to promote positivity and useful information across the internet great yes yeah, so i actually love that idea good yeah <laughs> is there an app that you hate but you still use it anyway oh um i would have to look at my phone now uh <laughs> <laughs> there, there are probably lots of awful designed apps in terms of um of um you know, if I say usability and, and, and user interface, I mean, I have, I have one app in particular without wanting to name the company um, where I, you know, um, if I say can get my prescription from my doctors through. And it, the, the app itself is fine, but as soon as you order something, you get an amount of emails, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and when, when you don't order your prescription for a while, they literally send you a, a reminder every week um, to the extent where you just don't want to use the app. It, I suppose it doesn't really have anything to do with the app. It's just more the, the customer service behind it. But if you look at the recent apps from the NHS or, um, you know, the COVID apps, they're, you know, they're all functional, but not very cleverly designed apps, in my opinion. Um, but we still have to use them. Um, and I'm sure if I look at my phone, there, there are quite a few of <laughs> those I can pick out, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, relatable as you know, yeah, so relatable. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just too many. I mean, I mean, we're so dependent on apps these days. I was just thinking this morning. Um, I participate in a in a um, in a study about slow eating and mindfulness eating, and um, they're using a an, an app that is designed for hit exercise. So you have interval training, so interval eating, um, kind of, and that's that's quite interesting. Um, so yeah, so you, you make do with with other apps, but I found it awful to set up the app for for different purpose. So I guess it justifies people developing new apps or or niche apps all the time. Yeah, absolutely. What's something that a lot of people are missing out on because they don't know about it? Hmm. Very philosophical question, in my opinion. I think I think a lot of people don't don't understand what makes them happy. And by not knowing what makes them happy, I think they miss out a lot in life. Um, so I don't think it's about physical 
gratification or if I say buying anything, um, it's it's more about if I say your your mental state, you know, and I mean I'm a big advocate of of, of mindfulness and and meditation, um, you know, gratitude, compassion, um, self awareness, you know, all, all those lovely things that come with um, mindfulness. But uh, I think I think that you know a lot of people miss out on on self awareness and, and discovering them themselves and what they want to achieve in life and what they want to do in life by not doing so i think they're missing out on a, on a part of happiness which then leads you know if i say i, th I think that, that's the, they, they're just missing missing a bit and i think we all could be a happy yep. place when when we discover what actually drives us on i mean coming back to motivation right what what is intrinsic motivation and what can we you know what? What do we need to achieve in order to be be happy in life? You know, who who do we want to share our lives with? You know, um, you know, who who do we want to give back to? And I think that's you know, once you start answering those questions, I think that's that's where people, um, you know, get happier, get you know, more fulfilled, and a lot of people missing out on that by just kind of like living, um, if I say the Groundhog Day or not giving it too much thought or just, if I say, just chasing the career and the money without questioning why. Sorry, very philosophical answer here. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a very good philosophy for sure. A very good inspiration for future generations to come. Thank you. <laughs> you're, welcome. you're welcome. How much time do you spend on the internet? Most days, probably about 12 hours, I reckon. <laughs> You know, I'm an early riser, so as soon as you get up, you, you know, you you go online. That's what you do, right? You check your emails. Mm -hmm. You know, you um you work, you you do video calls. That's how we live these days. Um, so most days it's probably going to be a good twelve hours. Yeah. Most of your waking time, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If your life was a meal, what kind of meal would it be? Oh. Delicious, of course. Freshly cooked with fresh ingredients, um, and a good glass of red wine. Oh, very lavish. Yeah. Now you're making me hungry. <laughs> it's almost dinner time. <laughs> oh yes. I mean, I mean, fair enough. It's it's already it's already tea time for me right now, or dinner, exactly. most of my mates call it. Absolutely. What? It? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is the best pair of shoes you own? Oh, my, my, my best pair of shoes is probably a pair of hiking boots um, from an Austrian or Italian manufacturer, which cost me a fortune, um, but they're well worth it. So I, uh, I absolutely love them, particularly if you go hill walking in, in Scotland, as the Queen used to be. So I, I need to <laughs> need to say that now, right? But um yeah, my, my wife's from Scotland and, and we do go hill walking in Scotland. So I invested in a really good pair of shoes. Um, oh. and, and I always invest in good running shoes. So as, as a runner, you don't want to invest in uh, cheap running shoes. Well, if it's worth it, it's definitely worth it. Definitely. Yeah. What has been, what, what is the most craziest, most outrageous thing you want to achieve? Oh, um... That is a good question where I can't really think of an answer just now. <laughs> it's all right. It happens. It happens. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there are several goals I want to achieve. Um, you know, I, I, m maybe a, a, an, an exit with a company would be nice. Um, you know, from a if I say, career perspective. Um, um, other than that, I think, you know, once it's not my achievement, I would like to, I mean, it's, it's partly my achievement, right? Bring, bringing my kids up in a way that they, you know, makes this world a better place. I mean, again, I don't want to, want to sound negative or doom and gloom, but with, with global warming and everything else going on in this world, I think the future generation, you know, needs a good start, if I say, in, in, in life in order to, to be able to tackle those problems. Um, because they, they're the ones that have to deal with it, unfortunately. So be, being able to, to bring up your children in a way that they, you know, tackle those problems rather than ignoring those problems, I think that's maybe something else I would like to achieve. 
Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I'm getting I, very philosophical here, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fabulous. Would you rather be very tall or very short? Oh, I, I definitely don't want to be poor and I also don't want to be short because I'm a very tall person as I am. So, you know, I wouldn't mind being a little bit shorter, maybe. Kind of dodging the question, isn't it? Mm. I mean, yeah, fair, I mean, fair enough. We all we all want to be at a certain height that is very adaptable and useful for us, like able to reach from very high places to uh, crawling through very small spaces. There's always got to be a balance in some way. Yeah. Yeah. What's the most useful thing you own? Probably my iPad, to be honest. Um, because when, when I go to London or when, when I go and, and watch the kids football games or football training, I shall say the games I'm actually watching football or karate training or anything like that, I can just take my iPad. It doesn't take up much space. It's very light to carry and I can do 99% of the work I can do on my laptop. So probably my most useful thing. Oh yes. Technology. Yeah. Something that we all need to get, to get work done. Exactly, and I love my gadgets, so... Yeah, as do I. And that's all we have for this episode. It's great, okay. having, you here. It's great having you here, Volker, talking about your works as a chief revenue officer and uh, moving from Germany to the UK and everything else has been amazing. Yeah, thank you very much for, for having me. Anytime. And until next time, stay tuned for more. <laughs>